Dr. Ted Venema Talks Audiology, the educational whiteboard series brought to you by Next Gen Hearing. Hi, I'm Ted Venema, here to talk to you about reading the audiogram. The audiogram is known as the hearing test. And on the hearing test, two things are shown. The degree or amount of hearing loss, as well as the nature or the type of one's hearing loss. An audiogram shows results done by air conduction testing and by bone conduction testing. I'll explain each of these. Air conduction testing is done when the patient is wearing headphones on the right and left ears and the patient is inside of a sound booth sitting down and he or she raises a hand or pushes a button letting the clinician know that he or she heard the tones presented through those headphones. The clinician is facing the patient through a glass window and is presenting the tones through what is called an audiometer. Every time the patient hears a tone, he or she raises a hand or pushes a button, thus alerting the clinician that the tone was audible or heard. Air conduction testing, as I said, is done under headphones. When you're presenting tones under headphones, you're going through the outer, the middle, and all the way to the inner ear, and of course up the eighth nerve to the brain. We present seven octave tones. They begin at low C, 125 cycles per second, or 125 hertz. We test six more octave frequencies higher. We test at low C, middle C, high C, and four more octaves going higher. So the audiogram normally spans a, a, a pitch range from low C all the way to 8,000 cycles, or 8,000 hertz. So bass mid and frequent and high frequencies are all presented. This way we get an idea of the patient's hearing levels across the whole hearing range of pitch or frequency. Air conduction testing is done to show the degree of one's hearing loss. The tones are presented at a decibel level loud enough for the client to easily hear, and he or she raises a hand or pushes a button, and then the clinician starts making the tones softer and softer until the patient can no longer hear them. The softest level that the patient can just barely hear any one of those tones is called the patient's threshold for that tone. As a, again, the, it's air conduction testing shows the degree of hearing loss, and that degree can change or be, fluctuate madly between frequencies. So you can have good hearing in the bass frequencies and poor hearing for the treble, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Air conduction results are shown with X's and O's. We play tic-tac-toe. The O's represent the right ear, the X's represent the left ear, and these are shown across the audiogram. Now, when you, if we take a look at this first picture I'm going to show you, it's showing you the degrees of hearing loss. You'll notice the, the pitch or frequencies running along the numbers along the top, and decibels increase from zero down to 120 decibels, which is screamingly loud. And the, the patient's X's and O's are plotted across the audiogram. Now, you'll notice if it takes 25 decibels or less, for the patient to just barely hear the tone, he or she is said to have normal hearing for that tone. If it takes between 25 and 40 decibels for the patient to just barely hear, he or she has a mild hearing loss. If it takes between 40 or 60 decibels to just barely hear, the patient has a moderate degree of hearing loss. 70 decibels, moderately severe hearing loss. 80 decibels, severe hearing loss. 90 or more, a profound hearing loss. Again, I say though, those degrees of loss are shown by air conduction testing under headphones and are plotted as X's and O's going across the audiogram. The second part of the hearing test is to show the nature or type of hearing loss. And this is done by bone conduction testing. With bone conduction testing, we're placing an oscillator, a little black box, with a headband, and we're placing that oscillator on the mastoid bone behind the patient's ear. It's important to note that with bone conduction testing, you are bypassing the outer and the middle ears, and you're sending sound straight through the skull to the inner ear or cochlea by bone conduction. So the results of bone conduction are compared to the results of air conduction. And that helps us get an idea of what role the outer or middle ear is, is, is playing in the patient's hearing loss. 
Let's look at an example. The second slide is showing you conductive hearing loss. Quite common in children with otitis media. Look at the audiogram here. The audiogram is showing you the X's and O's, and you'll notice that they're, they're around 40 to 50 decibels, e fairly equally across the pitch range. This indicates that the child or the patient has a moderate degree, mild to moderate degree of hearing loss through the headphones. However, when we remove, when we remove the headphones and place the oscillator behind the ear, the hearing, you'll notice these little hatch marks running across the top of the audiogram near zero decibels. That's indicating normal hearing by bone conduction. Ah, so the hair cells inside the cochlea are, are functioning just fine. That's not the problem. When we avoid the outer and middle ears, the hearing is shown to be normal by bone conduction. However, when we deliver the sound through the headphone, there's a blockage somewhere, either in the outer ear or middle ear, that's preventing the passage or the conduction of sound to the cochlea. So when the air conduction testing thresholds are poorer than the bone conduction testing thresholds, the patient is said to have a conductive hearing loss. Now, conductive hearing loss is only about 5% of, uh, of the entire hearing loss population. Let's look at the third slide here, showing sensory neural loss. Now, note the X's and O's on this diagram are sloping down like a hill. In the low frequencies or pitches, you can see that the patient did not require many decibels to just barely hear the tones with the right and left ears. And as we move to higher pitches or frequencies, you'll notice more and more decibel levels are required in order for the patient to just barely hear the tones. So this person is said to have a treble hearing loss. We call that the trouble with treble. And what the, you notice here very carefully that the bone conduction thresholds follow right along with the air conduction thresholds. They're hugging themselves together. In other words, when we present tones through the headphones, hearing loss. What, how much or where? Mostly for treble. Take off the headphones, place the bone oscillator behind on the mastoid bone behind the ear, no increased hearing sensitivity. In other words, the same decibel levels are required to just barely hear the tone. So you'll note now the outer and middle ears are free of any culpability. They're not blocking sound because when we avoid them, the patient didn't have any better hearing than he or she did with the headphones. This is sensory neural hearing loss. It's important to note that sensory neural hearing loss, comprising about 95% of the hearing loss population, most of it is treble in its, in its pitch range. Most of it is found in the treble frequencies. I call it the trouble with treble. And what does this mean for hearing speech? The person can't hear the high-pitched treble consonants like S, F, T, H. And this patient is saying, young people mumbled today. I just can't hear what they said. Now contrast this with the second diagram we showed you with conductive hearing loss. That tends to be flat or equal across the frequency range. Conductive hearing loss is just like wearing an earplug. In fact, when people wear earplugs for hearing protection, they're giving themselves an artificial conductive hearing loss on purpose. So conductive hearing loss is a blockage of the conduction of sound to the cochlea, but that's only in 5% of the population. 95% of the population has presbycusis, hearing loss in the elderly. Usually treble is where the hearing loss is, and it's sensory neural. Thanks for listening. See you next time. <laughs>